to be kept uh, necessary, and they couldn't answer me. So I wanted to talk to the lukewarm Christians in this uh, stream and tell you guys you need to repent. Yeah, I Can think you prove that we're lukewarm? Heffy, you need to humble yourself and repent of your false works gospel. And stop judging Amen. people. Aren't you, you guys, lukewarm by worshiping your uh, football team? Have you guys? <laughs> I never sat down and prayed to a football team. Sorry about that. Heffy, seriously, go to the question. Judge. Two, eight and nine. You don't need to. You... And examine what you believe. Because have you, you... Have you read about the lukewarm Christian? <clears throat> yeah. Guys... No one here sits on the fence between the <laughs> world and God. First of all, you're wrong. That wasn't. A lukewarm Christian. Sure. It was a letter written to a church. It wasn't an individual. It was just addressing the church in general. Was so, it a warning? Was it what? Was it a warning? It was a call to repentance. Sure, it was a warning, but oh. no one here is on the fence for God. So it was a warning. Well, actually, no, I think I'm wrong. It was. It was written to the pastor of that church. I'm sorry. You guys should study a little bit more, man. It might it might help you out. You know? you no one here is on more. the fence for God. No one here is on the fence. You should Effie, watch I the... ask you, how can I lose my salvation? You can't defend yes. your position from Scripture. Are you telling me to study? The Bible gives you warnings for a reason. Why would the I like Bible... how he's not acknowledging my comment. I know. And what, okay, what are the warnings warning of, and who are the warnings written to? Uh, what are the warnings written of? It says to. Uh, yeah, for, for example, what are they warning of? Because there doesn't exist a single passage in the New Testament that warns someone they could lose their salvation. You want to, you want to bet? You want to do a little bet? Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Wait, wait, betting? Oh, that's, man, I, that's, I'm uh, getting a popcorn now for this one. I'm getting a popcorn. It's not a real bet. It's not a real bet. It's oh, just, come on now. Oh, now he's changing it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a real bet. <laughs> Oh, well, come on, let's, 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 let's think about it. Use your, use your a noodle a little bit. Hefe, Hefe, no one here is on the fence for God. No one's here. No, he no just, one here he just is. Said, he just said the Bible doesn't warn you about uh, losing. Okay, but I'm telling you, no one here is on, is is uh, living for the world and living for God at the same well, time. Well, Praise said he was going to go watch some uh, gay porn. So no, I, I, I didn't. I, no, well, no, yeah, I didn't. Can you, can you prove that? You, you lie. Got the Why are you liar? lying, Hefe? I got the evidence of that. Nose is growing please right show now. the evidence. Yeah, yeah I please show it. it. It was show uh, your screen. It was on this. Go around. I mean, a, 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 or you're playing Gabe accuser. <laughs> Lie, please. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a video. It's on. Uh, you have something uh, it, far praise. I think you are. I just want to. I just want to. Are you stay. projecting, Hefe? Are you the one that's watching gay porn right now? Hey, nothing, I, because he I, sure is all worried about you. I think so. Truth, I think so. The truth hurts. Uh, praise that that may praise the devil. So, having can you can you prove hey. to me how you know that I'm lukewarm? I don't. I really don't know. You. you. I'm just talking about the other demons. So then, why would you say I'm lukewarm then? I wasn't talking to you. I wasn't talking. You said I want to talk to the group of lukewarm Christians in here, and I'm part of that group. So why would you say that? Gay porn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my gosh! I said that in jest, you idiot, to make yeah, fun of your it. comment. It was a yeah. joke. What what kind of a Christian man says that? <laughs> because so we're not allowed a sense idiot. of humor. No, we're not know. allowed a sense of humor. Christian man goes around accusing. Brethren. Yeah, what kind of Christian man goes around and calls people lukewarm? Yeah, you don't even yeah, know that. Does the Bible ban, ban gay porn specifically? I want a verse and chapter. Uh, if you, don't know, <laughs> you, you, you have no sense. That's what I'm saying. Peace of respect, Richard Madsen. Just read a little bit. It'll help you guys out, man. That's all. Right. Peace. Just, hey, 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 peace happy. and respect, Richard. Peace, peace and respect so, to you so all. Good upon you. Do you, do you have to contribute to your salvation? Do I have to contribute to my salvation? Yes. Do I do uh let's see, do I have to follow God's laws? Do I have to follow God? Do I do I have to, do I have to follow God? Is that what you're saying? What do you no, I'm asking. No, is it do, up to you? No, oh my gosh. Do, what do, do you have, what let me ask it this way? What do you have to do to keep yourself saved? 
does uh, the Bible say to be obedient? So, so your salvation is is basically leads you to be obedient. So much. So the well, Bible. Hang on, Tara, because I want to get to the root of this. I want because no, 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 hold on. Say one thing. The Bible says you are the you follow uh, who you obey. So if you are, uh, well, I uh, understand that, but so is then, is your salvation dependent upon your ability to be obedient? I would say uh, the Bible says yes. That's what I okay. was saying. Do me a favor, Heffy. Can you read Ephesians chapter two, verse eight and nine, please, real quick? You read it, and then I'll then I'll correct you. I'm going to show it on screen. Might as well just expose Hefe. Hey, you know what? Don't leave the don't leave the part you don't disagree with. Don't leave it out. All right. Don't leave okay. the good stuff. Why, Something here in this there verse. To leave out? A lot yeah. of people overlook this in this verse here. For by just grace, by the way. Through faith Sorry. is not of your self. Okay. Hefe, if it's dependent on your obedience, it's of yourself. Keep you got to read the whole Bible, bud. It is the gift of God, <laughs> not of work, so no one can boast. And also, uh, Romans 11 says that the, the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Then, then we ignore the... the is the irrevocable gift. and is not dependent on yourself, according to Ephesians 2, and it's not of works, according to Ephesians 2. So you need to repent. Well, if that was the truth, then that's the that's the only thing the Bible would say. Correct? Heffy. Does no, listen question, on the screen? A, does does verse eight say salvation is not it, of yourself? Then that's the only thing that that the Bible would say would just believe, just believe, and you're good. That's what the only thing the Bible would say. Correct? Well, we can get into that, but right now I just want oh, you to acknowledge Ephesians two eight. Doesn't it say? Question. Does it say it's not of yourself? You can't answer the question. See, you, yes, I can. Well, but well, I asked mine first. I want mine addressed first, and then we could deal with that. So well, verse eight on the screen. Does it say it's not of yourself, yes or no? Do you no, you're going to answer. That? You're going to answer my question. Answer the question. Why are you so scared of Ephesians two eight? Who said I'm scared of it? Why are you so scared why of? You, why are you ignoring it? Why are you so scared of the ten virgins? Huh? I'm not. It's a parable that you obviously don't understand. Exactly, it's a parable of people. I'm not talking about obeying God. It's not why, talking about being ready expecting... spiritually. Really? Working yes, out for the, the old, signs. The yes. The knowledge of the Holy Spirit. He's saying that the ten. Okay, so the foolish virgins had no oil. In other words, they weren't saved. They didn't have the Holy uh, Spirit. The ones that were ready were the ones that had the oil, the Holy Spirit. They had to you go get some. The now, get, stop deflecting and, and read verse eight, Hefi, and deal and answer my question. Ephesians nah, two eight. You answer my. You answer my questions. I don't answer. I just did. You brought up what? the, the yeah, parable of the kind of sovereign right citizen. Is. I don't answer questions. Hey, go ahead and read verse nine, because because you don't like to read the verses that you uh, that you don't agree with. So go ahead and read, read verse nine. Yeah, it says it's not of yourselves; it's the gift of God, so no one can boast. Go ahead, keep reading, bud. Why you stop reading? What do you mean? I'm because I'm asking you about verse eight. Do you see in that verse how read it says verse, it's not of yourselves? Read, read verse ten. Sorry about that. Yeah, the good works we do are before ordained by God that we will do them. Yeah, I understand that. I believe that. Uh, so uh, that answers your question, correct? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oh, Because I'm asking yeah. you, because ahead, verse 8 says it's not of yourself and it's not of works, so you can't boast. I asked you, is yeah. your salvation dependent upon your obedience? And you said yes. That the good works come created. from God and not from yourself. We are created for his workmanship. Created in Jesus Christ for good works. Yes, that the come he from where? Ordained, but... Where do the works come from? Where do the yourself works... or the Holy Spirit? Amen. Oh, does it say the the works come from the Holy Spirit? It comes from God. The yeah, Holy Spirit is a part of God. So here's what you do: you, you put whatever <laughs> you think goes in there instead of go. Is by the what... Holy Spirit not a part of God? No, don't, don't, don't put in, don't not take heavy. You still okay. haven't, wait, I've been trying to get you to read verse eight. Are we not led by the spirit? Don't, don't take the Bible out of context. Do it. Praise, you see, he <laughs> will not address verse eight. You see this? Yeah, he's dodging. You're dodging. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bad. Well, I want to let Richard it's speak too, because he's been waiting to speak. speak. Go ahead, Richard. Hold on. Not even yeah, go ahead, Richard. 
Hefe, are you interested in an actual conversation, uh, you know, with good arguments presented so we can come to some kind of conclusion, or are you just interested in being a contrarian? I mean, I don't know you. I'm genuinely asking. Are you interested? Yeah, I am. Right. That's why I'm offering it. That's why I'm offering it, too, to some lukewarm Christians. That's what I'm offering. Uh, okay, you okay. Go. well, let's, again. let's, let's uh, not... Let's not add on people and assume their position no, because none of us know the other one's mind, right? Say to judge the people in the church. I'm sorry, your microphone cut out to me. Can you say it again, please? We'll say to judge the church. And it cut out in exactly the same place. Give a little pause when I stop and then start, please. Does the Bible say to judge the church? To judge the church. No. The Bible doesn't say to judge the church. The Bible says the leader of the church should judge the church. No. Okay. We'll pull that up then. Let me, let's see where that says. Go ahead. Pull that up. It, it's not asking you to judge exactly. the church, brother. You can't pull that up, correct? What? I don't have control of praises screen, man. Well, then uh, go ahead. Quote that verse. Doesn't Romans 14 say not to judge one another on, anymore? He, but not he's going to quote, quote the verse. Look, quote the verse. Jefe, before, the... before we move on to 30 different exactly. topics, if it's no, no, okay, no, no, no. could, could we topic. state a... We're on that one how is topic. this the same topic? Quote the verse. Quote the verse. Wait, Hefe, this isn't fair because exactly. I answered your questions. Once again, you guys, you, can't, you guys can't back. pick up your, your doc, your false right, doctrine. It, it's Before Romans 14, on, I want you to address verse 8 that's on screen, please. I'm trying to get... Hefe, are you, are you familiar I'll, I'll, with what a gish gallop is, Hefe? Are you familiar with that term? Yeah, uh, you can't you can't back up your your last claim. Correct? Look, look before you move on. Exactly. Are you familiar? No, we're not moving are on. you we're familiar? Not on. I need you to back up that claim, bud. This is you so you asked a question that was off topic, and we were no, already on no. a topic. You, you said that that the the pastor is the one that uh, judges the church. So so yes. go ahead and open that scripture up, bud. We're gonna get yeah, to that scripture. That is to say, the shepherd. That is to say, the good shepherd and or Christ. Okay, where's um, it at? But we can it, we can no, talk about no, that don't, next. Don't jump around, bud. We're gonna stay on that topic. Jump, what do you mean? Don't jump around. I can, the I topic. Can the back up. If you want. Back up your claim. The topic Come was on. is on was on screen. It's on screen right now. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. That, that's what I'm you have no idea. The what gift you're of God. You have well, you no can claim that, but about. I have arguments. But could we just talk about this one first? Like, just say you you can't back up your last statement that you said. Okay, that's all okay I'll right. admit it. Okay, okay, Thank okay. You. If that that's pleases all I you, that's all I want. That pl could I finish a sentence, please? I'm letting yes, you finish, finish yours. Finish your sentence. Thank you. I will admit that you're jumping around. I just said to <laughs> back up your stinking statement. So back up your statement now. Go back and back up your statement that you said the pastor is the one that judges the church. I, I want to address hey, this first. Hey, we'll bud, get to that you, next. No, please. you can't do it. Hey, hey, bud. Read verse 8, please. Hey, bud. Hey, bud. Ugh. We've already read that before. Come on, Hefe. Yes. You're just disturbing are... things. You're you're not edifying anyone. Yes, you know you're not edifying other, anyone, right? Be righteous. Righteous judgment, yes. Righteous judgment. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's very true. The church Bible says that I'm, heavy, the church I'm trying to you. The the enemy. I'm actually trying to help you, okay? I'm trying no, I'm to trying help you. I answered your question, I'll answer theirs. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you. Okay, and who is righteous? Uh, no, not one. Not one, not one is righteous. Who is righteous? Christ. As I said, the shepherd judges the flock. Nope, it doesn't say that, does it? Yes, it does. No, it throughout does the Bible. Yes, it okay, does. Where's throughout it say the that? Bible. Where's, what's, what verse is that? Are, are you saying that it doesn't read? What Richard, verse? get the damn verse, man. So we Give me the verse. Not, I don't care about verses. It, is exactly. it true that the Bible... I don't care about verses. I don't. <laughs> okay, does the Bible read that none are righteous or does it not? We both we know this. Know. Let's say I never that, read the Bible. What do you mean you Richard? don't... Well, then get out of the conversation and go read it. No, you, you're, you're telling us to read the whole fucking Bible looking for... No, you verse. already know it. You already know none are righteous, Bible, no, not one. Yes, the Bible does say Several that. I mean, times. Guys. Yes, that, that's, that's in Romans 3, Richard. But that shit that you said earlier, he's trying to get you. He's trying to nail you down. That we Jesus, know you're going to open that a rabbit Jesus hole is the and judge? take him down with you. No, I'm trying to concentrate on this right here, 8, on the screen. That's what I'm if trying to concentrate it, Richard, on. If people watch this, never read a fucking word in the Bible. you got to show them the verse that you're talking about. 
Oh, I'm, I didn't say that, that I'm going verse by verse through the Bible. I never claimed no, yeah, that. The verse you're talking about, where, where it says that the shepherd will judge the sheep. Yeah, yeah. He's lying. Where the fuck did we find that? He has no idea no, what he's talking about. No, it's it's throughout the text, and we all know no, it. No, it's not I throughout the, the text. I can't say that. Okay, then prove it then. Okay, I'll, I'll find you. I'll go and find you. Not that we weren't already in a conversation, no, and I don't think you're being completely we forthcoming. We already started your conversation, bud, so don't try to back out of it It's now. right here on the screen is where the conversation was when I came in. What are you, you have, talking all right, about? Next, next person, this guy that has no idea what he's talking about. Next, you next can, person. You can keep claiming that. It's an interesting claim all right well uh i got another guy that just said you have no idea what you're talking about i don't i don't care what two people said of no course we know that so let's get back to the no we're going to talk about the false prophets we're going to go talk about the false prophet uh, where's that at the false prophet happy where you it told says me, that you told me to you, answer your question first who's the false prophet so now the let's false get back prophet to prophet is uh, the people who are say they're saved, but they're really not. That's who it is. That's not a prophet. That's a false convert. Happy. No, no, I'm not going to let you dodge because you said. No, nah, no, nah, we've already been through that before. We've already been through that. I before. answered your question, so you lied. So you're not going to do it. You didn't answer any question, of mine. So you're lying. Hey, what kind of popcorn you got? Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> no, no, Happy. <clears throat> deal with verse eight before we go on to another question because I answered oh your goodness. question. And you said we could well, deal with mine after, and we have. We already dealt with your question. It, yes, no, we did. That is true. Correct. So you agree it's not of yourself? Do I agree it's not of myself? Yes. Do you agree of salvation course. is not of you? That's that's a ridiculous question. Well, how could I do it? Right. That's my point. See, because I asked you, is your salvation based upon your obedience? And you said yes. This verse says no. It's it not is obedient. based on your obedience. Salvation. Okay. Listen, that's a separate read verse topic, eight one more time, Heffy. Read verse that's eight one more time. Salvation is from Christ, but yes. you have to be obedient. Not like no. you guys actually. You just on this negated show. what you just said. You're when you no, said it but, does not. you negated your previous uh, statement. I negated <laughs> it by, by hey, listen, obedience, you, you're, you're not obedient to, you're not obedient hey, for Kevin, your salvation. Kevin. You are obedient because it's like are saying saved. I'm straight, but I like men. That's exactly what you just said. Well, that's speaking like a straight uh, <laughs> demon. That's how that's we're how saved by talk. Jesus, but we have to obey. Like you're negating what you're saying. Well, then, well, then the Bible would say you don't have to obey, right? No, it doesn't say that. We well, exactly. we obey by it being led by the Holy obey. Spirit. It's okay. not of yourself. Okay, why would the why would the Bible say that you are the master Happy. to who you obey? Happy. You 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 yeah, have no, 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 no. Answer that question. On? Answer because that question. Because you agreed that it's not of yourself. No, but then no, you we're, we're, we're talking saying, about Romans six no. sixteen phrase, by the way. Is that Romans six sixteen. Why would it say you you're the you're the slave of who you obey? Why would it say that? I need you to answer that question. We're not going to get all, anywhere. Okay, hold on. Answer that question. Romans six verse. I'm going to it. Romans six sixteen. I'm no, still trying not. to figure out how this guy's in charge of your of your stream, praise. Because praise uh, to out. doesn't know what he's talking about. What does verse seventeen say? <laughs> I think praise is being patient, actually. Talking. Yeah, I try to be. Hey, patient. praise. Read, should, should, read, read seventeen. What is? Oh, uh, let's go to say? let's go to fifteen. How will we start at fifteen? It says, uh, what shall we then? sin because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Obviously. Absolutely, absolutely not. Do you, whoever so, says that we should. Yeah, who says we should? Everybody on this stream. Uh, no. Kevin. <laughs> no. Kevin. No. Praise said he was going to go watch gay porn. Uh, oh, my God. Um, apparently, apparently, Christians can't have sense of humor, apparently. No, well, I was actually mocking Hefe because no. he says I was gay. And I was saying, well, I'm going to go watch gay porn. Hold on. Let's, let's go ahead and read 16. Don't you know uh, that, that if you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are the slaves of that you obey, neither of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. No, read, either, the it, no hold on. read 17. It, read 17. 17 oh, tells yeah. you how you obey the gospel. You, you you can't you can't leave out this what I just read. You know, no, we're right? not. We're not. We're read not. 17. 17 okay. explains 16. Okay. Okay, let me read it. Let me read it. 
So it says either of either of sin leading to death. So sin leads to death, correct? Correct. Yes. Or of obedience leading to uh, to righteousness. But thank God, although you used to be slaves of sin, you obey from the heart that, that pattern form of, of doctrine, doctrine which now, was on, delivered what is, that, you. what is that doctrine? What is the form of yeah, doctrine? The doctrine? The gospel. That's the gospel. You okay. obeyed the gospel by believing. This like still, you, you can't, you can't. <laughs> you, demonic soteriology is pathetic, Heffy. You're blind. You are so blind. It's, it's unbelievable how blind you are. How, how do you obey how can we, believing how can we the gospel? What the was that? How can we actually decide? <laughs> guys, how can we actually decide how we should read this? Let scripture interpret scripture. What else? Do, what else? Go what ahead. Other, keep reading. Uh, no, uh, keep reading. Read, read 18. You, you didn't read 18. Heffy, verse 17 addressed you. You made free from sin. You became servants of righteousness. How do you become free you, from sin? You, you can't You can't leave out scripture, bud. We, uh, we understand that the, the, the gospel makes you free. We understand that. But when you yeah, and your, fel- you, your followers. You the gospel by believing. You, that's how you obey the gospel. It's not talking about doing works. Unbelievable. I just can't believe it. What do you mean? It literally Jesus says, says the will you him. obey. That, mean? that everyone who believe, sees the Son and believes him has Have everlasting it, do you, life. Do you lose your sinful nature after you believe? Ooh. So you're saying you can't you can't go without sinning? Sure you can, but oh, do you lose you your much. sinful nature? Well, that that do I lose my sinful nature after mm-hmm. believing? Yeah. Are you saying Christ doesn't have the power to to to? to you're not Christ. To Buffy, heal can you? you. Please stop answering questions with questions. Just answer the question. No, no I'm, 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 gonna ask, I'm gonna ask question. He asked me a question. I'm gonna ask him a question. Romans seven says we fight with our. Sinful See, nature and with here, our uh, divine nature. Here's the problem. We have the you, Holy Spirit. You, you guys are so weak that you guys love your sin. And All so you have love you, sin you, here. You, what are you, you talking guys about? Justify You're it. assuming, you dude. Scripture, you have no spiritual understanding of these passages. You guys no, justify uh, your you, you guys justify your wicked who, behavior on who, this uh, channel. Just, <laughs> what what who wicked this behavior are we justifying? Sin because it's, that's quite an accusation. I want to who justifies sin on this panel? Tell me right now. Uh, praise does. He thinks it's funny. Oh, Everything's oh. funny to him. You so are funny. Right your beliefs are funny, dude. Really so, like so so these another women. another uh, sinless perfectionist would tell you watching football is idolatry. Yeah. No. <laughs> so are you going to stop watching football? Did you I lose think, your salvation I think, today, I don't, think, I don't think you understand what you're talking about once again. Really? Oh, well, my God. Gotta, There's so your ignorance. Salvation back. You need to humble yourself, man. God resists the proud but gives There are yourself. people you like you who say football is sinful. It's ridiculous. Well, guys, he's, on, he's just making whatever out. arguments he can. He all he's doing is making what arguments he can. Me. He doesn't mean any of this. Yeah. He I bet you watch football before you go Why to church. Why are you scrolling, F.A.? Really, seriously, hey, buddy. I, mean, I just wanted to ask you guys a couple questions, you know what I mean? That's all. It's, it's, well, if you're, if, if, yeah, if well, you guys are so... You need to answer ours. That's not a conversation. If you guys are so holier than thou, then why do you guys uh, act the way hey, you act? Are you scared to answer questions? You're huh? holier than thou. Oh, yeah, you his wife screaming again. I never, I never <laughs> said I was holier than that. I just said, hey, I'm not a lukewarm Christian. Good for yeah. you. Heffy, Heffy, you're right. You're not a Christian at all. You deny the gospel. You need to get saved. Does that make How you can, better than no, everybody else? You're, you're saying mm-hmm. once saved every, every... I got saved a long time ago, remember? No, you didn't. So it's no, you once didn't saved every saved. You don't know saved. what the gospel is. You have no idea. You have a work righteousness. Wait, you wait, what do you say? The finished work of Christ. You One trust saved, every work. saved. Devil you are not every saved. You are saved. little people. If Jesus says in Matthew saved? 7, they point to their works and he says, depart from me, I never knew you. You work wherever no, you, you You said devil I worshipers do. are saved. You are trusting in your works. You do not trust the finished work of Christ. So I'm not saved, but you a devil worshiper is saved. You need to, you need to humble yourself, Heffy. Hey, you're an Kevin arrogant and you don't know what you're talking about. Hey, hey Kevin. Okay. How, how can a I devil worship? I show you Ephesians two eight. If he, he repented, he could by he repenting. Yeah, no, he said. Kevin when it was, said, you were shown wrong by the verse. You didn't acknowledge you were wrong. You tried to move on to another. Verse. It's just a black screen. In case you Kevin know. said, uh, "You have no humility whatsoever. You are an arrogant scumbag, Heffy." See, there, I like, I, that's what I'm talking about. Tell me yes. how you really feel, Kevin. 
That's what You're I'm being saying. an arrogant scumbag. You need to stop. And you said that a devil worshiper is saved. Because he's when did I ever saved. Yeah. Yeah. saved. Do I look like I'm a free grace trash bag to you? Yes, I, you do. I'm not. Okay, so that's that's how ignorant you are. You don't listen to anything hey, you say. Hey, Hefe, did you know the team you like is named after um, people who uh, committed well, hang idolatry? On. Hang on. I know. We can, did we you can know that? on the Kansas City Chiefs, that's but I want, to, Chief? I, see, I want to show you something. That's amazing. Born, yeah, they were Indians. Do you know what a chief is? A chief is a boss. They were named after Indians. Good, good. Boss. Wow, that's amazing. Boss. That's like amazing. the Washington Lost Redskins, the Washington Redskins, they were Native Americans. Snowflake, we know that. What, what do you want to go vote for Snowflake. Hillary Clinton? <laughs> what? what? So random. You bunch Are, you random. Are you guys You're abortion trying, lovers? Are you guys a bunch of abortion loving Democrats on this side? Uh, I'm an abortion lover. I bet uh. you are. Here we you go, rejecting again with his holier than thou attitude. Are you guys a bunch of Democrats on this, uh, Christian Democrats on this uh, channel? I'm not a Democrat or Hello. a Republican. Epic, I'm a Christian. Stop we hear you, Dave. Why are you so we hear you. to exegete scripture? I don't understand. You, why are you, you are such an arrogant smug scum. Why do you leave out? Er- I want to meet an arrogant scum. You talk enough. Shut your heretical You can't mouth. leave out scripture. The Bible says the do arrogant scumbag. Heffy is an arrogant, Bible. smug, self-righteous scumbag. <laughs> what an arrogant scumbag! God, God. we got an arrogant scumbag. Are you going to cast him out, Tom? Are you going to you going to put him out? The I'm not scumbag. a conservative either. Mark I know you guys him. are a bunch of Democrats. I knew you guys were. I'm not a Democrat either. I'm going to let him fail a little bit. Who said I was a so Democrat, you scumbag? You guys, are crazy, of, you guys love Hillary Clinton on this channel. You don't listen. Crazy. You, don't you, listen. you know this conversation is never going to move forward with this guy in the chat, right? Hey, hey, you hey guys have a good night. you like to label people, uh, you're a fornicator. How about that? All right. Thanks, man. Have a good day. Yeah, you're a spiritual <laughs> faggot, too. You, <laughs> he likes to label people, and then once he gets stuff. labeled, he's like, okay, bye. You know, I'm almost tempted to, to upload that to my channel, how he just he did everything in his power to dodge verse 8. Who was that guy? It's so sad. Yeah, he dodged. He's, he's a, a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Yeah. He's a work salvationist. <laughs> he's a filth. And he attacks <laughs> other people and says you're not Christians when he doesn't even know what the gospel is, Dave. Well, I know. I'm not a Christian. So. What? I got 500 virgins waiting for me. Ali, 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 snack on the bar. I decided that I'm going to be an anything goes Christian. Non Christian. No, that's kind of let's obvious. let's not give him any more free rent. So praise. Who on this panel has ever said a Christian could go out and worship the devil? Who's ever said that? I did. Well, we know someone, one of them, Charles, but not in this panel though. Yeah. That's, I that, could, that's what it's, Pastor David Reed says in his PDF file on Columbus well, Bible Church. Jesus Church. says his sheep won't do that, so that's obviously Is that what Jesus right? said? Are you one of his Happy sheep? He's so stupid. He, do, he doesn't know uh, that people have individual positions. He judges all of us based on something he's heard from some free grace person. Like, no one on this panel. I'm not that one of his sheep. Scumbag. Are you one of his sheep? Vile human being. Man, we got to spray those hairy ticks right there, Kevin. <laughs> you know, I think, I think Heffy needs a meme, too. I'm going to put uh, the Chiefs up there. <laughs> <laughs> Are we one of his sheep? Are we? Are we sheep? Am I a sheep or am I a goat? I don't know, Dave. Tell me what's the gospel. Uh, well, you guys got the. You guys could tell the other guy wasn't saved. I was figuring I could come in here and get a. Oh yeah, because he. Well, I never said he wasn't saved. That was Kevin. I oh no, I'm, I'll I, say it again. He's definitely not saved because he thinks his work. I can't say that confidently because I don't know him. He does a, a, he has a work performance based salvation. That there's that I, I, there's no saving power in that whatsoever. I'd be a hypocrite saying he's not. Well, saved then you explain to me. Yeah. If if works isn't the way to do things, then go go explain to me Romans uh, two six through two ten. I want to hear what you got to say about that. Okay. Romans Wait, two six through ten, and then you so tell you, me. Do you believe work saves? Well, just explain Romans two six through ten. It's that simple. It's only five. Yeah, verses. Great, a conversation is going to happen. Cool. Uh, you should read from verse. Uh. One. Why? I want to read from two six. Well, because uh, <laughs> well, because verse six uh, 
Is that like, is that how to read the Bible, Isaiah 28, 9 through 13? Or do I have to read outside of 9 through 13 and Isaiah 28? Well, if you cross Depends reference how verse long. 6, because Paul is uh, referencing <laughs> a Bible terrible. verse from the Old Testament. But anyway, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to read from what verse if I, you what if, if I, I mean, if I'm going to have to read from verse 1 in chapter 2, I might as well read from verse 1 in chapter 1. Well, you know, the whole story, okay. no matter how long the story may be, do it, is appropriate. Do whatever you want. I was just wanting to have it in context. I mean, I ain't got time to read 16 chapters of Romans. I just want to pull out six verses and, you know, prove my you point. You just said six through ten, though. Or five verses. Yeah. I can't count. I'm at five. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, man. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll read it. Who will render yeah, ahead, every Jared. man... Who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life, but in, to them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile, but glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the so Gentile. So if you're patient, continuing and well-doing, you seek for glory, you get eternal life and you get eternal life. But if you're content, freaking scared me. Oh my gosh. And all that, you get indignation and wrath. So it's about what you do. I'm a works face. Yeah, if, if you do if you do bad things, bad things will happen to you. If you do good things, good things will happen Amen. to you. Amen. Now but you're it, safe. If you do good about, things, again, you go to heaven. If you go to bad things, you go to hell. Truth. It talks about obeying the truth. There's other verses. It's not that talking about salvation. About What's the truth? That Jesus Christ is God, then he died for the sins and he rose again. Other verses tell us how to obey the truth. And that's believe on the Son. You have to believe interpret scripture. What does that mean to believe on the Son? It means to trust Six him. or ten is talking about when the Jesus, judgment of right, God. I need an exclamation because it's just a simple question. It's not that hard. So when Jesus came to Nicodemus and he told well, I'm him, trying to answer your question, but everyone won't well, shut I know, up. But I want to know because everybody tells you you must be born again. So I'm going to just think about John. You know, and Dave, you know what? I, I don't mind you asking questions, but I do get annoyed when all you do is really? ask questions. And you nobody ever gets annoyed with you, though, do they? Do they ever get annoyed with you? No, not you. Nobody ever gets annoyed with you, do they? But much so love, Dwayne. Good to see you, buddy. So what if we did a round robin and everyone get a chance to engage? What if we did that? Sure. I'd be, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> yeah, Let's <overboard>. do it. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are we addressing Romans 6 through 10? It looks like it. Because I can I, I can go first if you want just uh, just to get out of the way. Well, usually the person who wants to go first needs to, so that's cool. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> just true, man. So okay, so it's saying so it's saying uh, the five verses that we read is talking about the judgment of God. A man may boast of great personal goodness. He may rely heavily on his r racial or oh, national he's, origin. He's commentary now. Come on now. Well, yeah, it's 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 a study. You Bible. care what he said? How do you know he's right? How do you know this guy's right? Who is this? Who said it? Uh, William McDonald. Oh, you've ever met him? No. Oh, you have. Don't trust someone you haven't smelled. So I shouldn't trust God. I haven't smelled him. Really? <laughs> Okay. Uh, he may plead the fact that there were men of God of his ancestry, but he will be judged by his own conduct and not by any of these other things. His works will be his determining factor. If we took verses 6 through 11 by themselves, it would be easy to conclude that they teach salvation by works. They seem to say that those who do good works will thereby earn eternal life. But it should be clear that the passage cannot mean that because then it would flatly contradict the consistent testimony of the rest of Scripture to the effect that salvation is by faith. Apart from works, Schaefer points out that about 150 passages in the New Testament condition salvation solely on faith or believing. No one passage, when rightly understood, can contradict <laughs> such overwhelmingly testimony. Praise has the answer on the screen. He's circling it. <laughs> yes, you follow me, Kevin. There's your answer, yes, Dave. <laughs> there's your it answer. It is God which worketh in you to do good to his good pleasure. There you go. By the way, real quick, if Paul T's in the chat room, I think you got kicked out of my channel. I'll put you back in. Somebody kicked Paul him got out. booted for what? From Bob. Bob's been on the warp path over there. There, we don't need to oh, do a round robin. The door and shove the wood we up can just crack. cross a reference. Anyway, oh just, just a well, I think I think we should ask News Unit if that was sufficient. Yeah, is that good enough for you, News Unit? Mm-mm. Not good enough for me. 
I'm never satisfied. <sighs> okay, anyway. Next question, I guess. Oh, he does. I'd like I'll read from second. verse one then and get the context. We might as well just go to chapter one, verse one, and read it. It's not that far away, is it? Paul, a servant of yeah, Jesus okay. Christ. Let's, uh, let's make a KJV. No, no we don't have time. Yeah. For that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Okay, news unit, would you agree with me that a, an absolutely materialistic atheist could accidentally do a good work that, that would align with the Bible? Sure. Okay, could, could they live their life, no, is no. it possible, just statistically, that they could, it could happen, that some absolutely materialistic, atheistic, God-hating son of a bitch... Loves human beings and does nothing but good works their whole life. Might have been like Judas. He just did one wrong thing. He, you know, he, he by That's not what I asked. Himself. If you don't mind. <laughs> well, I was just using an example. Yeah, I know, but it's off topic, so I wouldn't mind. Why, why is that off topic? topic? It's, that's not because it's not the topic. Because he did good to everybody. He, he was actually sent out to to heal and do all that stuff. So I'm just just thinking that. Yeah. Okay. So he did some good work. I can't think of anybody. That I know, okay. but I imagine there's there could be another. No, I'm just asking thing. if it's logically possible. I'm not asking for example. Logic, I'm not into. I'm not into logic and reason. Yes, That's you are. Wrong. You just made a logical statement. No, well, well you could say that. But I, I, I would just. I would, no, you just you just made a philosophical statement that you're not into logic. That's a philosophical statement. Whatever that is, I I have no idea. He's trolling Doesn't, you, dude. No, I'm I'm not I'm not trolling you. No, no, no. Dave is trolling you. I'm not oh, okay. trolling. I got the well, downriggers out. I'll just stop. I got the gates out. I got the downriggers down to sixty feet. Let, and I'm going with the trolling motor. Let me let me just let me just do it as an assertion. Throw a couple lines out the other side there, would you? Hey, hey, um, let me just let me just do it as an assertion. Uh, someone in Islam could do all good works their whole life. That doesn't mean they're following Christ. Doesn't mean they're following the Bible. Okay. If it's only works, let me finish, please. If it's Nobody only, I know, but this is going to take some patience. So I'm asking. <laughs> okay. I didn't think somebody interrupted me. I'm not delusional. All right. um, so okay, so so if they did nothing but good works, that doesn't mean they're saved. It doesn't. Um, but it requires faith. That is, we have to be interrupted by God to change our outlook. That matters. And that's going to result in good works. So does the Bible talk about good works? Yes, as a result of faith, specifically. Amen. Well, you know, I gotta, I'm only thinking of things that happen in the Scripture when I come up with an answer and then you call me. You say that I'm trolling, but that's okay. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is... Uh, well, Dave, I, I, no offense. Well, Dave, but well hold on a second. Now you're interrupting me. If I was Veckel, you, he wouldn't like that if you did what you just did. I mean, they're, treat me like Veckel. All right, so here, let me finish what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, Luke 1, 5, and 6. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And look what it says about these two in Luke 1, 6. It says, and they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Hmm. What kind of testimony is that in Luke 1, 6? Did you ever check that out? They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. So I guess you, you could do it. Well, what, is, what are those? What did Paul say all that constitutes? To well, that's God what he, they didn't know anything about neighbor. what Paul said when they were righteous before God. They didn't even have John the Baptist yet pop out of her legs. But they had Deuteronomy. Yeah, Paul tells you what they were doing, though. They just loved God with all the heart, and they love man and their yeah, neighbors. Yeah, so love the Lord God with your whole heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself, and you're going to heaven, baby. My faith. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, you got to remember, Luke one is also that's the Old Testament. That's the cross hadn't happened yet. This is the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. What are you talking about? The, yes, it's it's called the New Testament. But they were the under the Old Testament didn't. law. Yeah, the still. New Covenant didn't begin until Christ shed his blood on the cross. Listen, I had a Gideon. Even even Numi showed me the New Testament. He taught me this. It's Matthew. Dave, listen, open, your, open your ears. It's it's called the New Testament, 
but the new covenant didn't take effect until Christ shed his blood on the cross. Now, wait a minute. The new covenant or the New Testament? Is it a covenant between two people or a testament to death of the test there? You're mixing me up now. Now you said it was new covenant and then it said new testament, which is Dude, I, why do you do this? I don't well, I'm asking, I want clarification. You I just mixed understand. covenant and testament. Now what do you got? You oh Zacharias and Abiah were under the old covenant law, the old testament law still. But even under the old covenant, it was still. Are they under the old covenant or the old testament? What the hell is it? Because the testament and the covenant. The are old covenant things. and the old. It's the same thing, you moron. Same no, thing. No, it's not. Yeah. Look it up in a dictionary. You got to just get, get some logic and reason. You, you guys it. have to admit he's pretty quick. <laughs> ah, all he does is ask questions. He never exegetes anything. He never gives his opinion or what he. You want to debate me? I keep asking everybody for every debate day. for the last three months. Nobody wants to debate me. Why is that? Why should we? You never give your. We don't know what your position is on anything. All you do is ask questions well, and troll, Dave. Really? There's some nights you're cool, but yes. then there's other nights you're complete. Well, you know, Dave. Listen, Dave, you're right. The wind you're right. Blowing, you can't have a testament without the death of I'm a testator. I'm telling whether I'm going. So such is everyone that's born of the spirit. <laughs> so what of it? I've never met someone before, Dave. Where all they do that is knows ask the scripture like I do, right? They never That's tell right. you what they believe. They never exegete the text and give. I'm their exegeting position. all the time. I'm never exegeting. You know, you got wind blowing there, Dave, and you're I never exegete nothing. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I believe it. I'm a babel. I'm holy Bible authorized. The... Never, never exegete. Yes, don't ever, ever accuse. Right. I mean, never exegete. Don't ever accuse oh, me of resting the scriptures and exegeting some bullshit. I'm always well. We exegeting. can't. We can't accuse you of exegeting because you never exegete. All you do is read. <laughs> Oh, really? Is that right? Oh, that's all yeah, I know how to do is read. Is read. You, know you that. never exegete the passage. You just read them. That's all I know how to do is read. So, yeah, I've never seen you give an exegesis. All you do is just read. Any, yeah, never, 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 never. Well, am I wrong? <laughs> you never listen. You talk too much. Go Dave, listen. Had, I've, I've listened to you. Go watch three of my videos. And, and tell channel. me I never, ever exegete anything. You're well, right. I don't go to your channel, so when I see you here on right. President's that's channel, that's why you sit here and fall asleep because you don't have the facts. You just that. anybody you can just sit there and say shit that's not true, like you're doing, and not know what you're talking about. Because you just said I never go to your channel, but I know all about you. Wrong. Oh, wait, again, wait. You, you Actually, take, Dave, that's not completely you. fair. It's not completely fair, and I'll okay, tell you I'll why. Just, well, let's be more fair then. I what said I'm here on President's channel. You come in and you read, but you never exegete what you read. You don't give your Kevin, opinion. I'm trying to defend you if you'd allow me. <laughs> That'd be nice of you, since I'm defending you, you know? Okay. I've lost it completely. Never mind. <laughs> Dang, damn it. Tripping. No, well, no, well. <laughs> I was thinking about no the breakdown anymore. of the word. Yeah, that that last part's God. No, I think maybe a reference to light in that language. Noel might mean light of God. I was thinking about that because I heard a Christmas song. Thank you for hey, saying that one. Long time ago, Noel means truth, but I don't know if that's true. Well, light of God could be perceived as truth. That's one of the ways it's expressed. That's right. Did the first Noel the angels sing? That's how the song goes. Now, the song's based on Scripture, but it's like an artistic evaluation of Scripture. So it's not, you know... Spot on. It's got some license. Could be. So you know, how's it go again? The first Noel, Noel the, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds, shepherds where they lay, lay. <laughs> where, they where they lay, lay, lay keeping their sheep. Their sheep. On a cold, on a cold winter's, winter's night, night that was so deep. No 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 I'm gonna stick I like it. Wow. I prefer I prefer that was beautiful. I prefer I prefer uh, That was just a duet. We didn't even do a quartet yet. I prefer oh holy night over Noel. It would have been a lot better if you jumped in, Sparrow. We needed a female voice, actually. <laughs> you know, Dave, we're in scripture. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Tom, would you announce that it's KJV Light Happy Hour?
What it's happened? KJV Hebevo Hour. Yeah, he was hour. saying that you should have joined in singing with them, singing Noel. Oh, I did, I'm sorry. I had to step away uh, for a minute. I had to help my mom. Okay, so you're embarrassing in public. It's okay. <laughs> Praise, uh, share my screen real quick. I want to I show you what I got. What you got? I got a... Uh, uh, I got a study Bible thing. It shows me maps and stuff. So like, uh, do like Abraham's journey. I have like a map of it. What you got? You know I want it in. What you need? Or you know uh, let's I'm see. Not. Let's get a New Testament. Uh, Jesus's urban ministry. <laughs> Gives you all the places of his ministry. Oh, you got wait a minute, you got blue stacks. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Why don't it's, you uh, get my sword? You should get my sword, bro. Oh, I like I like a Takarta Bible. Sweet. Oh, dude, yeah. I'm gonna have to get that. But you, you, I you noticed can, that you can get the, like a whole bunch of yeah. stuff. So you can get like uh, all these study Bibles. Yeah. On here by uh, the Thomas Nelson. Are, what kind of interlinears do they got? But it's I, I don't like like the outline of it though. It's just on this, I, I saw that. It's so awesome though. It's actually really good. Yeah. See, like, like there's my uh, commentary. I really like Thomas Nelson. I, oh he, yeah. He has a lot of he has a lot of stuff. Or they have a lot of stuff. You know, like I used to be a really big fan of Half, Half Nelson. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I got. Nice, bro. I'm going to... I might know follow up with that, too. You know but, what HBO uh, is? I got him categorized, uh, Tom. He's a, he's a Calvinistic universalist. <laughs> At least he's consistent, though, but here we go. Everyone join in. The first Noel. Everybody sing. Come on. It's the so angel cool. did. <laughs> the Tasmanian devil. Yeah. See, that's what God... God... Oh, well. You ever seen a Home Alone movie? The first Home Alone movie? Remember the guy that, like, shovels the snow? Uh -huh. Kevin scared over the, 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 the Richard Ratsy. <laughs> and he falls. I think I remember that. Yeah, that's really. <laughs> Aren't we a beautiful mess, guys? Tasmanian devil, yeah. See, that's what God, God created a beautiful mess. That's what he did. <laughs> you, ever seen, you ever seen a Home Alone movie? The first Home Alone movie? Remember the guy that like shovels the snow? Uh -huh. Kevin scared over the, the, the Richard Ratsy. And he falls. I think I remember that. Yeah, that's really... <laughs> uh, so John thinks you're a senior there. Actually, I was trained. I just unblocked He's... everybody on my channel. Oh, I didn't over. get I didn't get very far in the classical training because of money, but yes, I was somewhat trained. So Cheryl, I unblocked. Bob. I mean, I I took Bob's wrench away, so he can't block anybody either. So, hmm. He's been sad. Jared has another one he wants to sing. Oh, holy night! You guys, oh that one? boy, love that song. Awesome. I, I love all the Christmas songs. Yeah, they're all good. I don't know. Mariah Carey is kind of annoying. Oh yeah! Oh, I meant the classics. I'm sorry. I meant I meant the classics. <laughs> All right. So here we go. We all sing in our heavenly bodies to the Lord. That is a good. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Can, can we do? Can we do White Christmas next? Why yeah, why not? Wait, that's Elvis, man. What do you think we are? <laughs> <laughs> With the jingle bells. 
Jingle, oh, Jingle Bells. Let's come on. I'm with him. Jingle oh, Bells. Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. <laughs> we have two witnesses. You have to do it. Oh, it's <laughs> down. Uh, Richard, I'm going to raise. All right. I'm going to raise. Go. Up it's a Jingle nice Bell. and short one. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go, right. girl. I'm kidding, Richard. I I loved it. That was awesome. Go it. Do it. Do yeah, it. That was amazing. I'm going karaoke I'm right here. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, it's gonna go down. For me, when I first found I know that in the America. Gary had a little lamb right or something. No, no, no. 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 It's the one where it's like, Mary, it's like, did you Mary, know that you know? Oh, that's what I meant, yeah. Good one day, he we'll knows. Power, that, that, that's a powerful song. That's a powerful Does song. Does everyone know their parts? Uh, I think I think the I praise is a baritone. But Sparrow, you yeah. you you have a good voice, Sparrow. Like you me. sing in. Like, I want, like, this song is so beautiful. Like, I'm going to stay out and I'm going to listen. Sparrow, what's your range? Do you, do you know which part to sing? Um, it just comes whenever you know. As <laughs> it just comes. Hey, there's uh, Walter. Good to see you, buddy. Where you been? How's everything going, man? Yeah, everything's going good. Uh, can I do uh, karaoke? Uh, yes, but they get yeah. to pick the songs. It's me. No, you know, first out in New York. What's the name of that song? I'm trying to figure it out. Like, uh, Oh Mary or something? Or Mary, did you Mary, know? Mary, did you know? Oh, Sorry. That's, right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Sparrow is there, Tone. She's good. This song is It'll Bring <laughs> Tears to Your Heart. Sparrow Tone. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. If you're going to play Mary, did you know? You got to play this version. This is like the best. Hold on. Let me pull this up. Kevin's knows. Kevin's got it. He's Hold got up it. now. Hold I love now. it. You have to get me in my worship mode real quick. That's beautiful. It's got to be in karaoke mode, though, right? Yeah. Oh, it, does, it doesn't have the words on screen. Oh, I got one here. I got to go. It'll be it'll be good because we all have the words on here. So. Oh, all right. Well, I'll put this one in the private chat if anyone wants to check it out later. I was a tenor, but I'm kind of getting older and probably getting closer to baritone by now. <laughs> You sound really good. Right. All right, I'm pulling it up. I, I, I'm doing the show screen now. It, I, yeah. I got it, Walter. Hold on. It's my save, babe. In the drum tank. An old man said to me. <laughs> oh, no. Won't see another one. And then he sang through. Yeah. Praise God, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I could have been someone. Well, so could anyone. You took my dreams from me. Oh, the lame will leave on the dog. Mary, did you know? Oh, Mary, did you know? Good. Oh, that was so good. You're under That's arrest. in the dispensation. Dispensa Are you a dispensationalist? No, that's just what it says. Oh, I know. Great. Yeah, that that in its dispensation of the fullness of all of times that might gather together in one heaven and which on earth, even in him, in whom also we obtain and in inheritance being predestined according 
to the purpose of the work workers workers amen no, that's a word, but yeah amen. It, yeah all things that glory who first trusted in christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye believed word of the I, I don't think so, no. Trust in the Lord, my friend. That's all you need. Trust in the Lord. Do not trust in yourself. Do not trust in any man. Trust in the Lord. And Amen. You, you shall be saved. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I, I want to say thank you so much for a beautiful evening as you put me to bed. Um, <laughs> Richard, Richard, I love you. Is it that I love you too, brother. Yeah. Much love, Richard, man. You really Thank made a good yeah. I really enjoyed you tonight. You're a great singer and yeah. you guys had had a great time. Had a great time. Peace you and respect really to you all. Richard. Peace and respect, you're, Richard. You're you're more than kind. I'm way out of practice. You guys have a great night. And God bless you. <laughs> and then you have Israel, of course, with the twelve patriarchs. Yeah. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Well, that's interesting, too, because uh, that happened more than once where the elder served the younger. If you think about it, that happened with uh, Cain and Abel. But it wasn't stated that way, but it just so happened that way, basically, sort of. Anyway, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Uh, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Now that's deep, isn't it? Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. I take it straight up. I take it corporate. I think Esau's a nation. Yeah. And Jacob's a nation too. Yeah. So Esau's the Edomites, right? Mount Seir. Yeah. Yeah. And all that. But how far does that nation go though from Esau? Whoosh. I, I did I did a couple about a week ago I was doing the names what they meant when they first came out. So like uh Esau, it meant like Russia, the red countries out there in the Soviet Union. Isn't that interesting? Red, the red countries. And it, his name means red too. Yeah. So I think God's telling us something like out what there. Is, I mean heel catcher or something godless. like that. Yeah, heel catcher, yeah. Maybe that's got something to do with he's going to set the hooks in their jaws, too. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not going to go that far yeah. to drag it in. But, you know, later on. What shall we say, then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. So, uh, Dave, I like to link uh, James 4, 6 with this passage. Do you? Yeah. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That, that brings that calls to your mind, James four or six. Yes. But it's not to him that will it. That means that you can't you you can't gain your own salvation. Like it's there. God's telling you, I'm the only one. I'm the one giving you salvation. And I'm the one that preserves you. Absolutely. Like, to me, that's what I see there. Thou wilt then say unto me, who, who doth yet he find fault for who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing form say, that, say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not, hath, not the powder, power, pow, hath not the potter power of the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called out of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. That's all that's you got to really read this, you know, in its entirety, you know. Yeah, it flows together with a lot of this stuff. This is a, this is a really tough passage because, like, this is, is. probably like just from just looking at it. I can see how Calvinists walk away with 
this idea of like a double. Yeah, you can, yeah. Well, that's what Spurgeon used to do. He would take one verse out of this kind of stuff, and he would just expound Calvinism for you know an hour and a half. Right, <laughs> but the problem is the the rest of the Bible doesn't uh, speak of this, so we have to be careful how we interpret these verses. And yeah, those guys were famous for that. So <clears throat> they'd get up and they would say, you know, they take a verse like. Uh, yeah, any one of these verses, really. So then it is, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. And then they just sit there and, you know, roll you over to fire for an hour. Oh, thou man, you know, you face the <laughs> of hell in the fire and all that, you know. Did you hear me read that sermon today by Spurgeon? For about, It took forever. Wow, I was tired after that. I was talking wow. to Ace Peel, and I read that whole sermon by Spurgeon called Free Will a Slave. And I got to the halfway point. I thought I saw that scroller on the side, you know, in my browser. I thought I got a long way to go with this thing, man. You know? <laughs> so I figured I'd just keep reading it, you know. But you know, really, those guys used to talk a lot and just use one verse of scripture, which is really devastating sometimes. Because really, if you think about it, I think there was a lot of resting of the scripture going on with that. Because they were ripping it out of context and they wouldn't take the whole thing. Oh yeah, it's, it becomes ph philosophical, like man's yeah. man's philosophy, and that's where I don't want to right. intrude. We know this is talking about God's sovereignty, though. Like we all know that, but it's how God uses His sovereignty that they assume that it means like hyper wooden, like God meticulously controls everything. Even mm -hmm. the man's choices and thoughts. And that's just not true. Nowhere in these texts does it say God controls man's thoughts and actions. No way. No, you're right. So it's, you know, it's, it's so, you know, people have, a, it's a hard, it's really hard to, just like Peter said, these are things that are hard to be understood. They are hard to understand. But, you know, you have to like, I think that takes me, that takes me back to where Jesus gave them understanding according to his word, or he opened their understanding that they would understand the scriptures. So it takes time, you know. Right. I mean, even after years of study, this is uh, an extremely difficult one to wrap your head around. Oh yeah, Romans nine. Well, speak of this because this isn't this isn't the milk. This is getting into the meat, you know. Right. Yeah. That too. There's that. So what if God, willing to show His wrath and to make His power known, endured? With much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afford, afford prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also in OC, which is Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. As shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, of the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Now here's another one where people take out of context. The rapture people like to take stuff like this and sit there and say, see, he's going to cut the work short. It's coming soon and all that. You know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, anybody can take anything out of context and just run with it, you know. Right. And, yeah. and as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed. Lord of Sabaoth, I think, is Lord of Armies, correct? Sabaoth, yeah. Sabaoth, I think it is, yeah. Except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed. We had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness... There's the answer. Have attained to what happened here? I got a drop down many problems. Stand by one. Something just went berserk here. Okay. Zaba. That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. Aren't we lucky? Her name, because she asked me not to a long time ago, so I'm not going to mention her name. But she told me that her son killed someone and that now he's out there he's on the run and she hopes that he burns in hell for all eternity okay that's what she said that's what she told me okay 
So there is at least one person who would want her own child to burn in hell for all eternity. But for the most part, all right, that's what, you know, when Paul talked about in the last days, perilous time shall come. And one of those things was unnatural affection. That's an unnatural affection to have towards your son, no matter how bad he is. Okay. No, you but according to, to the Augustinian affection. preachers that we have listened to, that's exactly what our heavenly father has done Unreal. before man was even created they say that god prepared a place for his created beings to punish them for their disobedience in eternal conscious torment folks that's the god of christendom i haven't heard any bible yet you know like i said not a single verse i do this frequently because the thought the very thought of what I'm talking about is very troublesome. Yeah, your vain philosophy. And I do scripture. this frequently. I begin my messages like Read this the Bible. frequently, and I do it for a specific reason. Heretic. You cannot believe the communications I receive from people from all over the world to whom the idea that God pre-planned and premeditated a place of punishment, punishment before he ever made man, knowing that man was going to fall, it seems to be normal for them. They're upset that someone doesn't think like them. You know, like, well, yeah, you know, he's God. He can do whatever he pleases. To which I answer, if God planned in eternity past to punish a being that he knew was going to fail, that would make him the most unfair and unjust creator and even a monster. I mean, think about this. We read in Malachi chapter 3, 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Right? That's, that's the immutability of God. So how did God go Heretic. from this monster who creates a place Seriously. of eternal conscious torment for his enemies to this God. So that this guy has a problem with the doctrine of hell. You have heard. So that he's going to universalism because he doesn't like the idea of hell. And hate thine enemy. Yeah, you mm -hmm. heard that, right? But I say unto God you, bless Sparrow, God love bless. your enemies. See you, Sparrow. Bless them that curse you. God bless. Do God good, good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despite despitefully use you and persecute you why would you want to do that that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust now here's the loving heavenly father who wants his children to be like him, good to everyone, good to your enemies, good to those who curse you, good to those who despitefully use you. This God in these verses is not the Augustinian God of Christendom. Here we go. This Here God go. and the God of Christendom are two diametrically opposed deities. Okay. <laughs> Now, I submit to you that so Malachi 3.6 says, oh. I am the Lord, I change not. We we this is the way God out. was before he created Adam and Eve. This is how he is. This is God. He blesses them. He blesses them. Yeah. So the view of Christendom, the God that is this monster, Oh, God's a monster for judging and sin, this God evil scumbag? Are two different gods. <laughs> One view has to be wrong. Oh, boy. Right. Either God is the monster that all the You're creatures you know make him out to be, or he's the God who is described in the words of Scripture as God is love. You know, this is why last week I was able to say with certainty that the world of preachers at large have weaponized they've weaponized the cross of jesus christ and turned it into a fear-mongering tool 
a tool that God it, never intended for a man to be used. Listen, if God had wanted to scare people into heaven, he would have given men instructions to weaponize the cross and use it to terrorize the people of Earth you and, and have no meaning it as an ultimatum. You're terrorizing you the cross that. by lying exactly. to the Exactly. say before that the cross is not wow. a billboard saying salvation is available. That's not what, what? the cross is. What? The cross is a billboard saying salvation is done. It's complete. It's finished. Okay? Yeah, but you have I mean, to believe. One of the most popular verses in the Bible, okay, is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting oh, life. Yeah. Believe it. Believe it, moron. Believe verse, it. You have to remember where believe. it's found in the word of God. Not everything in the word of God is written to yeah. us who are alive today. When Jesus Christ spoke these words in the four gospels, they were looking for <laughs> this part here, this yellow part did not exist. When Jesus Christ spoke those words, this is what it what it looked like. The church, the, the, the dispensation of grace, those of oh, us alive today who want to say yeah. Jesus Christ in a completely different way than these people understood him. Well, I want to pluck this idea of dispensation. We weren't around. We didn't exist. I mean, if you remember a month or so ago, we talked about the subject that consumed these people's minds even before that all the way back something consumed their minds and it was not if you die tonight do you know for sure you're going to go to heaven and if you don't know would you like to know if you could has this has this guy ever read hebrews chapter 11. Well, this is interesting because he really sums it up for universalism i never expected to find out so much information and in this guy's today's video. I've never seen him do it this way. In fact, as much as Ace has come over to talk to me, Ace has never presented it this good because he's got the, well, see, Ace has got that um, concordant Bible, which I, I can't even hear it. I can't even process it. It's all over the place. Has he got, has he got the, the, the star, you know, the uh, bed sheets, the, the Star Wars bed sheets. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're wrapped in there like a mummy and you're talking about bed sheets. I didn't catch what you said. So he's saying in the dispensation of grace, everyone gets saved, but he's so stupid that grace has always been, even during he's the law. About, I just want to hear what he says here, what he says about these people in the time past. What are these? Let's see what he says. No one had ever asked that question from Genesis until the days that Jesus Christ came into the world. <laughs> oh yeah the question he says no one has ever asked the question if you died right now are you sure you'd go to heaven and hell that's the common question on the street with street preachers okay i get that so no one's ever asked that question so let me see where he builds on that the subject that consumed these people's minds was how will you enter into the kingdom how are you going to go into that kingdom are you going to go there and be blessed and reign with jesus christ or will you go through the purifying, purging, refiner's fire to have to be cleansed of all your haughtiness and your pride and your arrogance? Or will you go in there and be blessed and reign with Jesus Christ? See, when the Lord spoke these words, John 3, 16, and he used the word perish, the thought of eternal conscious torment in the burning flames of hell was not in the mind of Jesus Christ. The perishing was the removal of all in man that is offensive to God. For most preachers today, God just created throw away people. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. If God is going to cast his own children in a burning hell for all eternity, then mankind itself is nothing but a piece of garbage fit to suffer and burn for all of eternity. That's right. We if are God knowing that man was going to fail at the temptation of the devil. 
and created a place for him to suffer, then God was creating nothing but a throwaway piece of trash when he created man. You know, at least according to the Augustinian preachers that we have all known in our past. You know, and they're angry. These preachers are angry that someone like me understands you see how all this that is feeling, this though? is not this what God is going to do. This guy is so self-righteous. Oh, you human. Yeah, you're right. There's no verses, you know. It's like we're all rubbish. We all deserve to die. None of us are worth dying for. That's how much God loved us. This idiot is trying to say God's a moral monster for creating a place of suffering. Well, that's the only other option. For a righteous man where some even dare to die, yeah. Dude, he gave his own son, so we don't have to go there. That's a that's a loving God. This guy is an absolute moron. Idiot. Boy, this really this really brings out what they believe right here, what they're talking about. If there's any Dave, video is, that this shows is, you. This is, uh, this is pissing me this off. This is like telling. They are so eager to throw people into eternal torment and pain that they continue to misrepresent your heavenly body every time they preach. I remember how many people have told me over the years how upset you were or they were with the religion that they came out of because you knew that your old religion had not told you that salvation was a free gift. Not only that, I've heard many people, some of you are on some of you are on right now. You've told me this in the past that how come I didn't learn the, about rightly dividing the word of truth until this time in my life? And you know, they're in their 60s, they're in their 70s. And that's a good question, right? Because you go through your whole you got Kramer soundboard? religious system. Totally put the shotgun totally on there. Deceptive religious system, and then all of a sudden you learn the truth, and you go, "Why did it take so long?" Well, there's a reason why it takes so long. You appreciate the truth more now than than you would have back then, because back then you had nothing to compare it to. But life is a series of comparisons. A, a contrast is being created in our lives. A contrast that ultimately in the eternal state will be such a contrast that will give you the greatest appreciation of having been through this life. You know, we go through problems. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But we go through problems and we say, man, you know, why is this happening to me? You know, And so... I can under I can relate to people of going. You should expose this. Why didn't I know this Kevin. before? So my question would have to be at this point, RK, you presented this case for you know, why would this loving God create his creation just to punish him when he knows what's going to happen? Right. Okay. So. <laughs> then why would God even allow a present period of time with all this? trouble that we're going through with your wife with her hip that's got to be replaced and you need money for it and you're asking for donations in the beginning of the broadcast and all this trouble you're going through why would god allow even this finite trouble really that's a why good would point. he even allow it to happen why wouldn't he step in and say hey don't eat that tree i told you not to eat that i'm, not, I'm just going to destroy that tree of knowledge and good and evil. let's get rid of that there's no why would he even create it well, uh, I think I might have an answer. It's because he wanted them to choose to love him, to choose to listen to what he says, to choose to obey him. He doesn't want robots. So he wanted free will and, and not just, you know, like, like Charles Haddon Spurgeon would call it free will a slave. Right. It's because in a world where there is no such thing as free choices, love can't exist. So if we were just all created, programmed to just mindlessly do what God says without us actually wanting to do what he says, that's not love. Like God wants a creature that chooses to listen and love him because they want to, not because they're programmed to. So free will couldn't exist without God giving them ch that choice in the garden. And so God's so worth it. Between a man and a woman, if a man wants to love a woman and marry her, 
He's got yep. five choices. Here's a big fat one. Here's a skinny one. Here's a mediocre one. Here's one of the, you know, whatever. He's not attracted to certain ones. He doesn't, he doesn't love, but he wants that cute one over there. He wants that redhead at the convenience store. And, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and he wants to get her because so, he loves her. Well, somebody would say, well, that's lust. That's not love. He should just love the big fat one because we love everybody. You know, it's not Christ like. But, you know, so we love somebody less, though. You know, you're not going to love, you know, you want the woman you want, right? You can love her, you feel good around her, you <laughs> that, whatever, you know, all that stuff. But, um, you know, I don't know. I'm just thinking about stuff like this because, you know, there's there's lesser love among us, you know, we kind of love less. Some people say that, you know, Jacob, if I loved Esau, if I hated, doesn't mean he hated Esau, it just meant he loved him less. I don't know. That is a general understanding, yes. Right. But this guy really, really brings out their beliefs. He's really letting it out there, isn't he? You should I be mean, a Habevo Universalist, Dave. No, I'm not going to be any such thing. <laughs> or now and all that. Let me tell you something. I'm angry today Ooh. that I fell uh -oh. for the Augustinian god of the torture chamber. Isn't that funny? I've been mentioning this, and now he's saying it over and over again. I heard him say it like a long time ago. You know, I'd, I'd like to take a thick, old-school table study Bible and just cock this guy upside the head with it. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> let me ask you guys a quick question, because you know some about this. Look at that tie he's got on. Is that a Marvel mystery fucking tie or something? I don't know. I'd like to choke him with it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> kind of Batman, Superman sort of tie for superheroes. I don't know. I can't make that. There was, there was always a part of me that just couldn't understand a God that would give his son to die for the sins of the world and then take 95% of those same people that he died for and then burn them forever. It is the objective. Always something. My goodness, he, man. he honors the choices of people because he loves them. Boy, does this explain. This guy is really, if you guys, if there's a video out there, I didn't watch this today. I swear I didn't watch this till now till with you guys. This is really exposing universalism cut and dry right here. No, this God who is love. Something was wrong. This is just all emotionalism. Something was the wrong. Entire argument with that it's theology. It's just like wrong. It. And it's it's something just that wrong. I told you God for like over ten years, and and it brought me to the place where it's I finally wrong. understood yeah. we had it all wrong. We've been teaching it all Absolutely wrong. Absolutely nothing you know, biblical people want to talk at all. About this guy's everlasting burning and all that in the four gospels. And these are people who will tell you in one breath, Jesus Christ wasn't talking to you, but then he's talking about a rich man, a parable of a rich man who's going through the 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 the, the, uh, uh, the touchstone. If you remember those messages, he's on God's touchstone, and he's being evaluated of what's pure gold and what's not pure gold, and all these things in the four gospels have to do with this kingdom out there in the future. And people who should know that are the very ones who are the most hardcore on preaching this fake, false doctrine of eternal conscious torment in the lake of fire. Okay? So, this is why I begin many of my messages reminding those of you who still listen to me about this God and how I see God now. Heavenly Father, I pray you shut down that channel. God better now than I ever in did. In the name of Jesus, I pray that any beloved over there would uh, excommunicate this fool. And I pray he comes to repentance, Lord, that you destroy him and bring him to his knees, that he trusts in you, Lord, and that you wipe the false gospel out of his demonic head. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me show you guys amen. something real quick. Let me show you something real quick here, too, that coincides with this just a little bit. It, it's from the Columbus Bible. Prince, imagine, imagine whining and crying about what he thinks should happen. That's might as well believe like his own religion. That's his own little religion yeah. he gets in. Absolutely. Uh, uh, 
Now look at these three clowns from Central Florida. They used to be fellowshipping with Rodney and all those guys, right? David Reed that I watch and everything and all these guys in right division. This is the right division, guys, with the chart. And so was Rodney. But Rodney left for universalism and then they cast him up. But watch what they say about Rodney. There just so happens to be, Tom, some guy in here called Grace for Grace that shows up. And he asked some really neat questions. Kind of like I would, you know. <laughs> Isn't that a coincidence? Yeah. Because I was kicked out of Get over yourself, Dave. Please. Out of this channel, but watch. Yeah. Hey, Grace for Grace is in the house. What's going on? How you doing? How you doing, Grace for Grace? What's up? Hello? Uh, could it be that Peter preached the same gospel that Paul did because in the King James, the words of the gospel are italics, so they aren't a direct translation or that the translation itself was an inspired mm -hmm. event? I don't, I, you can't, I don't think you could back it up in that, that idea from Scripture. Uh, but the men knew their Bibles. They knew the Greek and the uh, Hebrew extremely well, and they just crafted an accurate translation, which would require at times right. to include words that were not in Greek. Because right. you can't, it's not a word for word, perfect word for word translation. Does that, yeah. you yeah. like that okay? Also, but beside the point, the question is, you know, did Peter, Peter and Paul preach the same gospel? Right. Uh, I'm going to say this conditionally. Yes, they did. Paul preached the gospel, what he called the gospel of God, the gospel of Christ. Peter also preached the gospel of God. He refers to it in, in, in his epistle. So there is, a, there is a sense in which there is a body of truth of the gospel, well, 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, I don't know if I'd phrase it like that. I mean, there was, there was a foundation to both of the gospels that they had that was similar because it all came from Christ. You have that distinction in Galatians 2, 7 between the gospel of the circumcision was committed to me as the gospel of uh, the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Mm -hmm. Both gospels have a similar foundation, you know, even though they are uh, a, a bit different in terms of. What? How somebody would get saved. I mean, under the gospel of the kingdom, they were saved by just simply believing the Christ was the Messiah. Right. Under the gospel that Paul preached, it was still, right. he's, he's still. The Unbelievable. Welcome to my world. That's what This is what I've been raving about for the yeah, last six why, months. Why? I wouldn't even watch this stuff. Why torture yourself? Well, I had a lot of run-ins. you got to remember that I've had experiences in real life. This is just a spillover. So let, here, here, listen to this. I'm going to. Uh, this doesn't make any up. sense. Why would there be whoever this, person, whoever this person is? This grace for bra grace. Oh, go on, big Dave. It's the truth. I've been hearing it a couple of years myself. I don't boast about it as though it's some sort of badge of honor. Here's Ben. Grace. Yeah. They ask him about Rodney Below. This is going to get good in just about a minute and a half. Watch this. Oh, boy. It's going to get real good about Rodney, who you were just watching. The the Messiah of Israel, he's right. still everything, the, the son of God and everything. But under Paul, it's still death, burial, resurrection in order to, as a payment for your sins and trusting exactly, that. Exactly, but he preached that message out of Moses and the prophets. So well, there, Yeah, exactly. I so there, 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 is, there is a body, body of truth. Again, sometimes we say, well, the 12 preach the gospel of the kingdom. Well, they did. But did they not also preach the gospel of God? Paul preached the gospel of God, the gospel of Christ, and, and the gospel of the grace of God. Right. Those don't stand in, in opposition to each other. So how would you define the gospel of God? Well, as, as Paul defined it, you know, for instance, if you go to uh, Acts chapter 17, you see he comes into the um, uh, uh, into Thessalonica. He goes into the synagogue. The majority of his converts there are Gentiles. And he is preaching from Moses and the prophets how that Christ must die and be raised. Um, so, again, he's, he's teaching that message. As you said, that, that underlying message, I think, 
it, it goes back to the beginning mm-hmm. and, and it underlies as a foundation under the gospel of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Paul never preached the gospel of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. He did preach the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and yep. we've looked at, you know, the different yep. aspects. People try and make those the same thing. Things different are not the same. Right. The, the gospel of the kingdom is talking about Israel's kingdom, which is a part of the overall yep. kingdom of God. Just as we are, you know, we're not a nation. We don't have a covenant with God. And yet we're all a part of the church of God. We are all in Christ. And and there is that body of truth that he says goes all the way back to the beginning, how that Christ needed to die and raise the third day for that. And that that blood brings brings blessings to both us and Israel in different ways. Right. And, and, And I find that I get some resistance to that. But again, Paul's very clear that we are all partakers of the same spiritual root. Uh, again, in Act, I mean, in Romans, there where he talks about taking up offerings for the poor saints at Jerusalem, right? And and his motivation is having been made uh, partakers of their spiritual things. And a lot of people don't want to talk. What spiritual things did we inherit, or do we share in from from the nation of Israel? Paul well, said that there are those, and I would say. Again, the, the 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 spiritual, the chief spiritual thing mm-hmm. is Christ Himself, right? And that's what First Corinthians fifteen declares: how right. that Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, died for our sins, right? Right. According to the script, right? Yep. Love. Uh, yeah. Love that. Uh, we got Juliana in the house. How you doing? Uh, she's offering a virtual hug. A virtual hug right back to you, uh, sweet sister. Great having you here again. Uh, Jerry Winehouse says there isn't a right dividing church for 60 to 70 miles from here in Arizona. Uh, Ricky the Third's church in Tempe, Arizona, yeah. is a good hour and 45 minutes away, driving about 80 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, I would just watch him on YouTube if I really. You know. yeah, right. Um, if we stump the preachers, do I get a free book from Brother Joel? <laughs> <laughs> he'll give you the. He'll give you a free copy. Without you stumping the preachers, it's on the website. Yeah, hey, yeah there you go. <laughs> I'll share the link to my book. He already um, has. You know, we'll have to think that through. Uh, maybe I should offer something to somebody um, if uh, if they if they manage to stump us. Uh, but that's the thing is, it's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, You'll so be giving away a lot of books. <laughs> we're going to be giving away a lot of stuff. That's right. Um, right. Amy says uh, italics are used added to make uh, sense of the context of a past. Uh, that that italics word. Um, all right, we have another question here. Do you think Rodney uh, uh, Rodney B is a brother? He calls God the Augustinian God of the torture chamber now. Wow. He was once a brother who has now basically gone astray. I uh, maybe that's how I would characterize it. I yeah. think he's saved. He used to believe in right division, and then he just went sideways. Uh, Back in uh, what was it, 2020? Oh, I think something like that. I, I don't know. When we when yeah. we first started, he really went sideways. Yeah. And, um, and even if he reached the point where he denies God altogether, he said, you know, if if we deny Him, yet, yet He abideth faithful. God, He can't deny Himself. So, um, uh, I, you no, know, no, I just like you said, he's a brother. Well, he's we a brother, think, right? That has gone astray. Who I, I believe by everything that I understand from his testimony, conversations with him, time spent with him, that he's definitely a brother. Yeah, I don't agree with his doctrine. I don't agree with his right. teaching. Right. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that he's my brother. Yeah. Um, for us too, even uh, when he went astray, I mean, we, I, we, 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 we it reached a point where it got so nasty that we did say he should be marked and avoided, but. We still, we still uh, had love for him. We still do, and we would still pray that he comes back yeah. to sound doctrines of mm-hmm. grace and and gets right spiritually right again. Um, and that's still our hope. I just, I just want what's best for the guy, and I want him to right. to be able to uh, get back to that place of joy where he should be and get back to those sound doctrines of grace because what he is teaching error and a lot of it's heretical. Yeah. All the universalism stuff uh, is. Just he's got a he's got a universalist book out now. Yeah. Um. That's your. Yeah. That's your Christmas gift, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Well, yeah. I would read it. I mean, I've read some other things. That, I'm getting the I'm other getting, thing, and 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 I'm gonna gonna say this. People will say, 
well, look at the number of subscribers he has. Look, look at the number of people that listen to him. Look right. at the number of people that, that follow him. Well, again, that's not how we determine our doctrine, or we'd all be following Joel Osteen or, right. uh, uh, you know, right. one, of, one of these guys. Number, <laughs> no, numbers don't mean anything. Yeah, and he's like, uh, I remember that one time on the uh, last time he interacted with Brian, he's just talking about how, much, how many more numbers he's got than Brian, and that's just a slap of God. That's just God slapping you in the face, you know, and I'm just like, dude, dude, how is that behavior in any way, Pauline? Um, and so in any event, uh, um, yeah, I, I spelled all I've got on that. <laughs> it's all the glory. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, absolutely. The how can we Gentiles not be part of Israel when Paul says we are in Ephesians? We are no longer aliens from the commonwealth of Israel? Love that question. That's a great question. Uh, and let me ask it again. How can we be, how can we Gentiles not be part of Israel when Paul says we are, we are in Ephesians, we are no longer aliens from the commonwealth of Israel? <laughs> no. you, you want me to ramble He's, first until you was think of something brilliant talk, to say? Talking about the Gentiles. Yep. And the question he said, well, we, let's go back. Let's go look at it. There you go. All right. All right. That's uh, Ephesians, whoops, 2, uh, where are we? Uh, Ephesians 2, epic. Okay. Now, you notice he says, oh, I'm going to. I'm going to start in chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, right. remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles. Amen. He's talking about a group of people. He's talking about the Gentiles. Right. Who are called on circumcision by that which is called the circumcision and the flesh made by hands. Well, again, that's the way Israel treated the Gentiles. You're uncircumcision. They even called them dogs. Just, we've talked about this issue of agency. Israel was to be a light to the nations, to the Gentiles, to draw the Gentiles to God through their agency as being a light of God. That at that time you were without Christ. Why were they without Christ? Well, again, Messiah was Jewish, was promised to Israel. You were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Well, again, how did a Gentile overcome that? Does that mean he was just lost in times past? Nope. That there was no no possibility of him being um, no nope. to coming to God? Right. He came to the nation of Israel. Right. If, in fact, uh, they were told that they were to, the men were to be circumcised and, and they became heirs in the same way. In the same sense that the, so they were they were only strangers and aliens as they were outside the nation. Exactly, and Love and that. that's you know he said. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We don't need to go through Israel anymore because of the, and again, what blood was shed? It was the blood of the covenant that He made with Israel. Exactly, and yet that same blood accomplishes something for us as Gentiles today in the dispensation of grace of God, right. where where we get to participate in all these blessings without being in Israel. <laughs> Not because God made a covenant with us, but because we're in Christ. Right. Well, and then there is that other sense of where we are all one, and you get to the end of Ephesians 2, he brings up the, brings up the temple, which, I, which I, I, I love the temple illustration at the end of Ephesians 2. Right. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation mm -hmm. of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. We're all, you know, both programs, both the Jews and, and all of us in the body of Christ, kingdom, grace, prophecy, mystery. We're all in that temple. Right. We're all in that temple. And that and the cornerstone of that entire temple is the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord now, Jesus you have Christ. you have two different rooms or two different floors. You know, one is for Israel who have an earthly hope. We have the we uh, as a member.
members of the body of Christ, we have a heavenly hope. But we're all still in that same temple, and everybody in that temple is in Christ. So in the, in the one sense, there was a distinction, and there are distinctions today. But there are there is also the right. sense where we are also heirs. We are you know, heirs of Abraham. We are the, the seed of Abraham, enjoying the blessings of the promises of the, the kingdom mm-hmm. to come. And we're also, in another sense, in Christ, as everybody else is, who ever showed God faith in his son. Right. Well, it's also recent. We, we looked at the phrase, the church of God. Right. What is yeah. the church of God? And, you know, I used to rebel. I, I, I mentioned John R. Rice, how he said the church began with Adam. Right. And I said, well, that's not right. Yeah. But that's because, again, I had a, a myopic view of what church means. Right. Church is very generic word. You've got to understand which church he's talking about. Right. And there is a sense where, where Paul uses it and the other writers use it. The church of God is that overall, like the kingdom of God. Right. It's an overall uh, arching uh, designation and, and, and body, if you will. So, the, yes, God's church, the church of God did begin with Adam. Right. But that doesn't mean the church, the body of Christ, began with Adam. Right. Adam. It doesn't mean that the kingdom church right. that, that we see in Acts 2 started in Genesis with Adam. Right. All of God's assemblies. What about the church that was in the wilderness? You know, mm-hmm. the, again, there's all these distinctions about, about different churches. And, and so, so, again, some people, they say, well, we're not Israel. No, we're not Israel. But we are a part of the same household. Right. And, right. and that does not diminish me as a member of the body of Christ to acknowledge that members of that nation, of that, that kingdom church, that kingdom program, are also my brothers and sisters right. in Christ. Right. Not because they're in the body of Christ. But because they're in Christ, they're in the church of God. Uh, there's only one kingdom, as Pastor Hal used to tell oh, well, me. There, there is only one kingdom. <laughs> there's only one yeah. kingdom. Yeah. Uh, Amy Stewart says uh, things that are. There's a lot here to unpack, but uh, I just wanted to show you that, Tom, because uh, I wish Kevin was still here. Uh, but boy, that was quite a revelation from Rodney Below to actually go out there and tell us what universalism is. He really. If anybody let out the information, that's that that video right there did it, didn't it? That really, really lets people know that they, they believe in the God. I mean, he's making this case that all of Christendom, all these years in general, has preached this God, this this God of the torture chamber, and he's really not that kind of God. He's an all loving God, and he's going to save everybody in the end. Are you a universalist now, Dave? I'm a, uh, yeah, no, I'm not a universalist. I don't know. I'm, a babe. I'm still a Bevo. A Bevo. Good job, Dave. I When did Kevin leave? I didn't even know that he no, left. He, I don't know. I don't know if he left or he's coming back or not. I don't know. Wildheart is in his cocoon over there. His cocoon. Let's take a look at the cocoon. Yeah, go get us close up there. Down blanket. He needs He's to put some Clorox on that. Look at that. It's snoring. You can barely hear it. He'll be getting up here singing. The snooze unit is on. The snooze unit. Yeah. Wild Heart is now the snooze unit. The snooze unit. So there's a lot of controversy in this right division stuff, too. I noticed that these guys don't agree with Rod, uh, this one guy uh, that I watch, Pastor David Reed, about the king, about the uh, gospel of God. It's real complicated. There's about five different gospels that they kind of segregate. So I called it now. I got a new name for the gospel for these guys. It's called the Pentagospel. The <laughs> Pentagospel. Ooh, that's actually really good. It's the fivefold gospel, five gospels in one, kind of like the three in one trinity. This is the five in one gospel, the gospel that Jesus preached, which is the gospel of the kingdom that he preached to the Jews because he was a minister of the circumcision. Then you got the gospel of God. Then you got the gospel that Peter preached to the the, uh, circumcision. And you got the gospel that Paul preached to the uncircumcision.
That's the gospel of Jesus preached to the Jews was, you know, all these different things like in Matthew, Mark.